Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you one of my very old projects, something I started building um, with a friend, like I don't even know, maybe it was three or four years ago, and basically we had this crazy idea, you know, when, when the first PlayStation 3 came out, the fat model, uh, it burnt so much power, I think it was around 300 watts, that it basically overheated very easily and if you remember that there were a lot of occurrences of the uh, you load problem where you just got these yellow light flashing uh, blinking at the start once you tried to start the console and it didn't boot and that basically was because the processor heated up so much that it partially desoldered from the motherboard so we decided we'd take um, a computer case and put our PlayStation 3, actually my friend's PlayStation 3, inside the computer case. But that required, of course, completely disassembling the PlayStation, uh, extending some of the wires, and doing a lot of job to make it all fit. And I'll show you what it looked like. So basically, this whole mess you can see here was uh, what we were trying to build. And as I said, this was probably four years ago. Here you can see the original PlayStation 3 fan, which cooled the underside of the motherboard. Here's the motherboard with the original heatsink, um, the serial ATA hard drive fits right here. It was just glued to the back. How incredible was that? This is the fan's power supply, uh, because we have two fans right here at the bottom, and two, if you can see them, right here at the top. And this is a PWM controlled uh, power supply, so you can vary, uh, you can change the voltage and uh, change the speed these fans, these four fans run at. But basically, the speed of these four fans was never synced, was never in sync uh, with uh, the one of the main fan, the original fan that's controlled by the PlayStation 3, of course. So you basically had to manually adjust the speed of these fans. Um, but they kept the unit very cool once you had the uh, side panel on, which went on like this and completely covered it, created a nice airflow, and it worked pretty good. Um, here's the Blu ray drive, which was covered. Now it isn't. Basically, we have this, case, um, this panel that, that's the front panel. Uh, we even ported the capacitive touch switch. At the front here with a wire and it did work even though we had a couple problems with it because it was a little bit too sensitive but yeah it did work uh, I just took out the power supply the power supply was sitting over here over the fan um, yeah but you can see that this was a pretty bad work overall I mean the idea wasn't bad but you can see how everything was pretty much held in with tape and now I mean tape can keep a lot of things together but definitely it shouldn't be used to put a computer together so yeah pretty much the materials we used were this case a lot of tape and a lot of hot glue and yeah but now let's get to what prevented the system from actually being used which again it wasn't it wasn't overheating anymore it even turned on but this is the blu-ray drive and do you see this this thing at the back here this is actually an extension cable that I personally created um, to extend the original flat cable that went from the motherboard to the blu-ray drive and that thing uh, I think it took me like I don't know this this particular thing probably took me a couple of days to make and it worked a couple of times I mean we turned on we were able to load a couple games and then it stopped working and I know it's the, the the cable is the problem because it's so sophisticated and it's so much different than the original one which was basically a flat cable while I used uh, copper single core wires to transmit the data and that didn't work and basically this cable is what prevented this whole uh, crazy unit from uh, working properly so what I'm gonna start doing right now almost four years after 
we initially started building this thing is take it all apart and as you can see I've already started taking it apart and basically try and rebuild that cable but not using single wires um, but using something a little bit more appropriate if I can find it which is yeah like you know now um, these are all ATA cables and they have these very very small I don't know if you can see them but basically um, they're just like flat cables just you can solder into them if you um, if you know how to do it and a lot of modders use these to extend cables and uh, create their own cables if you look at modders like Ben Hackendorn they all used this sort of stuff and yeah I should have some more that I saved up I don't know where it is but anyway I'm gonna use some uh, old parallel ATA cable to do this so I'll just take it take this all apart and once I've taken it apart I'll show you what I want to do now I've just started sliding the motherboard out and I uh, wanted to show you all the mess of wires behind here this is the wire I was talking about before um, the, the one that connects the blu-ray drivers you can see it's all wrapped in tape um, yeah I don't know we we used so much tape it just looks ugly and you can see that the wires basically have a lot of joints even where they don't really need them but that's what happens when you first start modding and I mean basically it shows that you have to start from somewhere ah oh my this is just a disaster so I'm gonna have to pretty much redo all of this uh, but I wanna what I want to point out is that uh, the processor still works the motherboard itself still still works uh, so I can I can recycle this and finally uh, build this modded PlayStation so yeah um, now there are all of these wires like um, power for the blu-ray drive power for the fan and I'm gonna have to remove all of them and then completely slide out the motherboard so here we go I managed to pull out the motherboard the blu-ray drive and one of the fans we used here you can see basically we just used standard um, 80 millimeters computer fans they were pretty cheap also I mean do you even know this brand? I didn't and I don't know now. Here's the motherboard. You can see all uh, the wires. Uh, and here again, the terrible work that I did for this wire. You can see they're not even the same color. By the way, these are not color coded. I used different colors because it was running out of um, wires of the same color. So yeah, pretty cheap ass. It did work, but just a couple times. And what I figured out is that it might have stopped working because the power cable going to uh, the Blu-ray drive got damaged. As you can see, one of the wires it's basically cut and this happened because in here the wire was underneath here it hooked up this little hole and um, that's that's the way we connected it and then it ran uh, at the bottom here top of the fan and then to the motherboard uh, but we probably didn't realize that moving the blu-ray drive at the back would cut the wire so this is another thing um, I'm just disconnecting the fans right now from their headers I very conveniently had put on some perf board but yeah one of the very few uh, good things and everything else was pretty much completely <laughs> a disaster but anyway this project you know what even though it didn't work this was one of the most fun projects 
I've ever worked on. So <clears throat> now I'm just gonna try to recycle all this stuff and make this thing work again. I know I already said it, but I can't wait for this thing to actually start up one more time.